So the question is, is do your shoes matter when it comes to run form? Hey everyone, Steve Gonser here. I want to talk to you guys about run form and running shoes. We are getting ready. We are so close. We've been talking about it for a while. The Midfoot Project starts this Sunday at 6 a.m. Very excited. If you haven't checked it out, go to midfootproject.com. It's a program we want. It's a five-week program we run once a year. We run once a year. No pun intended on the run. Um, what I want to talk to you about though is a question that I got about shoes, and this has been shoes and run form have been a big play. Like you know, maybe a lot of people are, are spending two hundred and fifty dollars on shoes that barely make a difference when they have really poor run form. So shoes are something that you know, I think are overhyped for the most part because if your form sucks shoes are the least of your problems. But I wanna show you why the shoes don't matter as much as you might think when it comes to run form. There used to be this big push on Vibram five fingers, on minimalist neutral shoes. And I wanna show you why this isn't really the case for a lot of people. I see people who run in Vibram five fingers still, maybe the last three people, um, or really minimalist shoes and they still heel strike. They still run the same way as if they had a big shoe on, quote unquote, because of the all the extra cushion. So. The thing you have to know here is that when, when you're running, and my arm always gets tired doing these things. I wish I had somewhere to rest. Oh, I can do that. Um, when you're running, you uh, your foot's gonna swing forward. I'm gonna show you here in a minute. I wanna show you this video, but the shoe doesn't even come in contact with the ground and most runners are making their fatal flaw. So I have three runners I wanna show you. Um, let's go ahead and do this now. Uh, really old school, just taking a picture, a video of my uh, computer screen. But I wanna show you, we're just gonna watch this leg here and watch when it swings through because I talked about this a little bit in the past. The critical error for most runners is in their knee up here. And when they swing it through, you can see how that point really doesn't move, but we have this kind of banana swing of the foot. Oh, I'm looking at the screen and not my phone. Um, you see that swing of the foot. If you look in down here, you see how the foot's not even on the ground yet? It's not even on the ground. And she made the fatal mistake of straightening her knee already and turning this leg into a battering ram. The thing you have to remember is when that leg goes straight, you're all knee at that point. You're compressing the knee. You're actually breaking a lot because all the forces are going in contact with the ground and you want to blame the shoe. Well, the shoe's not even on the ground yet and you are already in the position to ruin your run form um, for the for the most part. So I wanna show you another runner because I wanna show you that I'm not cherry picking. I actually have another runner who is a midfoot striker and you're gonna see that even as a midfoot striker, the, the form flaws, let me just get it loaded up the right way here, is not in her, in the, the form in her shoes don't make a difference. So that's what I'm trying to spit out there. Let me show you this one. So here's a, a runner that's gonna come through. You're gonna swing, see the exact same thing on this right leg. We're gonna watch right through here. I'm actually gonna stop it here. You're gonna see that her knee really doesn't move from this circle. So go ahead and watch this leg swing through. Okay, see how that circle didn't really move? So she's swinging the leg through. The only difference here is that the runner, the first runner I showed you is gonna kick all the way out to the front and that's what causes that big terminal extension with the toes pulled up. That's your battering ram as this leg drives backwards because the force of the, the ground is gonna be doing that. So all the foot push off force here on the other runner was breaking there. This runner is gonna push off from this back foot and they're gonna be able to carry over and you're gonna see here that she's just about to touch the ground, you see that? And she has bent knee, which is what we're really shooting for in a midfoot strike. She's even healing a little bit here. So that's fine with me because this is by far the bigger priority. And this is what we teach in the midfoot project. Again, if you haven't checked it out, um, this is what we're going to be covering is how do you make these changes in your run form? Because when you, you can't blame the shoes, shoes forever because I just showed you two, two runners, two different run, uh, run forms, the shoes weren't even on the ground yet and these runners are making form flaws. Um, so you have to make sure that you're, you're working on the movement. The movement trumps all. You can't go buy something off the shelf and put it on your foot and expect your form to change. Now, I, I went live last night. I wanna show you this. Um, it's still up there because there were some questions on this. So I went live last night and I talked about um, how to progress in midfoot strike. So if you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna come over here and say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix my form, Steve. I'm gonna do it with you with midfoot project or I'm just gonna do it myself, which be careful. This is what I'm gonna show you. And we just got an email on this the other day about someone hurting themselves. So I, did, I went live on this last night and I talked about this. When you're changing your run form and you're gonna start landing on this bent knee that I showed you, let's go back over here real quick. Um, this bent knee that I'm showing you, the difference between this runner is she's gonna be loading a lot of her calf, she's gonna be loading a lot of her quad, her hamstrings, her glute up top. And the reason why she's doing that is because when you land on this bent knee, you're gonna shock absorb from those muscles. We go back to the other runner 
And when she swings that leg through this position, there's no muscle activation here other than the front of her shin. She's taking all that load through the bone. So if we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna show you like, okay, all these muscle groups are turning on. If they're not used, if they're not used to that load that you're gonna give them, you're gonna get hurt. This is all the stuff we cover in the Midfoot Project because we've been doing this for 10 years and we have a pretty good system to not get you hurt and to teach you how to run properly. Um, but let me show you part of the the sequence that we use to build up because at the very least, I'd like to at least help you not get hurt. If you're not gonna join us for the Midfoot Project, which starts Sunday, then I at least wanna make sure that you're not gonna get hurt doing this by yourself. So um, this is one of the systems we use. So it's, it's pretty simple. I'm a simple guy. 0.1 miles, 0.9. This is your old run form. This is your new run form. You go out for a run, you're gonna start improving your run form. You're gonna make sure, again, this is from last night if you want the full video on that. Um, you're gonna gonna start off at 0.1 miles of every mile you run in the new form. The old form is gonna kick in at 0.9. You're just gonna ask yourself, am I sore? Yes, I'm sore. You have to go back up. The muscle, the soreness is in the, indicated that your, your muscles are overworked. So we can't just go and keep working through. You're gonna get, you're gonna burn something out. If you're not sore, all we do is a 10% increase. 0.2 the new way, could be kilometers, miles, doesn't matter. 0.8 the old way. That toggling back and forth from good form, and old form and new form is paramount. You can't just jump in and start, you can't just change it overnight. It's a process. That's why our program is five weeks. Most runners take five, six, seven, even eight weeks, maybe even longer to make the changes, but it's self-guided. Like you can, you know when you can push, you know when you can pull back. The cool thing is, is when you learn good run form, it's that unique thing that you can do that will make you faster, make you more less prone to injury without having to do more, right? So you can do more speed work and run more miles. It's a good chance you're gonna get injured with that. Plus it takes a lot more time. You got job and family and things. So you can train harder, that takes more time, or you can add a lot of strength in, which I always think is a good idea to have some strength training, but it also is more time. Run form is unique. You can work on your run form while you run. You just need to know what to do. If you want to know what we know and what we've taught runners over the years, go to midfootproject.com. Check it out. Uh, we close the program on Saturday. We only do this program once a year. So check it out at midfootproject.com. Hopefully we see you join us. All right. Hope everyone has a great night. Talk to you soon.